competitor, Marcus, if the way you guys beat UCLA really badly last year, how would you feel if a team did that to you and then you were playing them the next year? I mean, this is basketball. It's not football. So you got you play one team and then you see them again in the next <coughs> year or in the next two weeks. So you, once you see them, you, like, you go at them just like it's every other game. But that's just how you have to do it as a basketball player. Marcus, how is coming. it different tonight without your floor general, Tyler Gillis, out there? Uh, I mean, it is different um, being able to, knowing he's able to fluently control the, control the team and control the pace of the game. But I think it was great for the rest of our team. Our other point guards were able to be a, sol a solid point guard for the whole game and figure things out by themselves without having Tyler to defer to. And I think that was great for our team to figure out. As someone who's is there... coming off a couple you know, rough games himself, do you have any wisdom to give this guy after the way he plays? He's learning. That's... That's the way it is at college. He's a freshman, so it's it's not something that that you have to just you have to like roll, let it roll off your back. Um, you can't just sit there and just drown up, drown on it because then you'll have a repeated bad games. And he already knows that, so he'll be ready the next game and he'll probably practice up just as are extremely hard to What it out. what exactly is he learning, Marcus? In an experience like this tonight, what do you hope he he learns from it? I mean, you'll learn a lot of things, but just by having a rough game, we're not, not going to call it a bad game because it's not—it wasn't a bad game. It's just a rough game. Um, he'll he'll find that it's just one game, one day. We, we're not full. We full plays twelve games, maybe like twelve games at max for the season. We play forty or thirty, so it's we'll play in two, like two or three days. So he knows to just rub it off and just keep going. Are you extra motivated tonight? Are you extra motivated tonight? Um, I just knew I had to do my job. Um, coming, coming off the mental night, it didn't really matter. I knew I had to help my team uh, to the best of my abilities, and that's all that matters. I helped my team. As you try to maintain that energy level, is there, is there some level of learning curve between two years of coming in and bursts off the bench versus being that starter and that heavy minute guy, keeping that level up you know, for longer periods of time? Um, that's definitely something. Um, that you have to learn as, as you go on. Um, when, when I first came, you I, you saw first, and that's all I knew. I knew how to do first, and now it's kind of forcing me to, to keep the energy up at all times, and that's something Cal always tries to remind us as a team. It's just to stay mentally ready and stay, and stay into the game, and then once you're into the game and into your team, you'll, you'll just start playing well by itself. Sorry. Second half, you came out with a lot of that energy. I mean, did you feel that you need to kind of step up, be that leader since, of course, Tyler was on the bench? I mean, you being one of the veterans on the team. Um, that's something definitely that we we kind of took over, me and Alex, and and since Tyler was here, so he we definitely didn't, he definitely wasn't quiet. And um, that's something great with, uh, with our leaders is that we're not quiet and we'll, we'll step up and say something about it and we'll try to fix it as quick as possible. What was he saying to you guys on the bench? It's Tyler, so I can't really say a lot of what he's saying, but just knowing that he's a great leader, he's always trying to teach our other guards how to figure things out, knowing that he's ever, he's been there. You, you've had two double-doubles in the last five games. What first two of your career, what what do you attribute that to, this this kind of coming out party, um, if that's what it is? I don't know. I, I still see it as a as an okay game. Um, and that's how the coaches put it. They were like, "You played okay today," and it wasn't it wasn't the best I was able to do to help my team. Um, and I know that, and that's something that I still have to work on uh, to give my team my, uh, my everything. And that's something I'm going to battle to. You had a career high rebound total, and yet you just labeled it okay. Uh, oh yeah, I still got yelled at for that. For a career high rebound total? Yes. Uh, Why? Why were you? Because my coaches it? have an expectation for me averaging a double-double, uh, 20 rebounds, 20 points in all of my high school career. So they have that expectation of me, and I have to exceed that expectation. I can't be anything under it. So anything under what they see me as is an okay game, and that's what drives me. What, what did Cal talk to you about after the South Florida game and heading into this, just in general? I mean, it was just a... These are rough games, and we have to figure them out. Um, we got to find a way to just be. We got to figure a way to be there and be ready together. But 
we have freshmen we, and we have some veterans that played a little bit last year, but we have to figure it out as we go. And that's what he's trying to remind us that we're we're all pretty much just just now playing together, and it's going to take a little bit of time. And this year, it took a, it's going to take a whole well, it's going to take a little bit more time than it did the previous years. How much did UCLA recruit you out of high school? That was three years ago. I really don't remember. Let me ask you this: Did you ever grow up thinking that you might want to one day play for UCLA when you were a kid? Oh, definitely. It's always a dream to think about uh, in California to think about those top teams: UCLA, Stanford, Cal, because those were all the teams that that battled and everybody had that big hype up. So. Growing up, those were always the teams you wanted to go to as uh, going to, uh, living in California. This will be the first true road game for you know the freshmen. Will you talk to them any, preparing for that? Or? We just went to Miami. We were there for like nine days. Yeah, but no, we were there it wasn't really a road. I mean, it wasn't, uh, you know, that wasn't their home court, though. That was still their home court, kind of. <laughs> yeah, they a bit different. <laughs> um, I think they're ready for it. They'll, they've played many games before. And it's not gonna. It's gonna, it's gonna be no different than any other day. They know that they have to get ready the exact, exact same way, and just do it themselves. And that's how we do it as a team. Marcus, you got to play a guy like Tony Parker. He's a senior. He knows how to play. What kind of problems can he present to you guys? No idea. Um, I don't know. It's, it all depends on that day. I mean, he can't. We'll, we'll scout once we. Uh, get there but we can go day by day and right now we're focused on the team we just played so we're not going to focus on teams three weeks in advance when we have seven games in front of us so we'll we'll figure that out tomorrow and we'll deal it deal with it accordingly what was it like last year to be on the court against them against anybody but against them and you got like a 41 to 7 lead what how does that uh, Impress. Uh, what does that do to your mind when you look up and it's forty-one to seven? I mean, it means nothing. It's points mean nothing. As long as you just keep going hard, we we see forty-one. We just might as well. Just, we got to keep going. We're not going to just stop. And because if we stop, then that helps. Our, that slows down our our production for the, the game after. Bye. Cal's been kind of on you guys for not keeping the pedal to the metal. Not. Uh, That's something we're still trying to learn. We see as. Oh, we're up 10. We're up 20. We're good, and that's not how we're supposed to play it. We're still, we're up 10. We're up 20. Let's go 40, and that's what that's what we have to learn. We have to learn to to keep them on the floor and then then end them. And that's how all basketball players go. And that's something we have to figure out as a team. Is that because of the personalities that you guys may be different from last year? Because Cal said last year you guys had a lot more of a killer instinct. Um, I I think it's something I kill, you have to learn a killer instinct. It's not some some people will have it. In them to be a killer, like like Isaiah, Isaiah's is and Tyler killers, like without a doubt. But that's something you have to learn as a team, and you have to be, learn each other first, then be able to be a killing team. And last year we had everybody back from freshman year, so we all were comfortable with each other, and then we were able to have the killer mentality. So Scal is a great talent, seems to be a great kid, but he doesn't seem to have a killer instinct. And some of these freshmen just don't seem to have that kind of thing. Am I being fair or not fair? Um. It's not so much them, but it's so much us. We have to figure it out as a team. And once we're able to push the certain buttons for, uh, for them, then we, we become better. I'm going to guess Cal will have a lot more of it by mid-January. Oh, Scal will definitely figure it out soon. And I have no doubt about that. Um, so once he figures it out, we'll start rolling like it's butter.